Major shakeup at the White House. Overnight, the Secretary of Homeland Security, Kirsten Nielsen, forced out by the president. The surprise announcement is the number of migrants at the border surges. What the shakeup will mean for the president's border crackdown and our broader security. Also this morning, finally free. The American woman kidnapped with her tour guide on safari, held hostage for nearly a week, now heading back to her California home. Her kidnappers still on the run. The race to find them. We're live on the scene. Evacuations and rescues underway in Oregon as rivers rise and severe storms pummel the south. Now the new threat as that system moves east. ABC News exclusive, the mother of that fifth grader who died after a classroom fight with another student, now breaking her silence. What she says really happened at that school and her demand for answers only on GMA. Church fire mystery. Three houses of worship all in the same parish up in flames. The FBI investigating. And Avengers Assemble, the stars of the highly anticipated Endgame sitting down for their first interview together and an exclusive first look at the movie already set to shatter records you'll only get on GMA this morning. Good morning, America. Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. And good morning, America. Hope you all had a great weekend. We've already got a family date planned for Avengers Endgame. Absolutely. In fact, you won't be alone, George, because they are projecting it could be the biggest box office opening ever, predicting nearly a billion with a B dollars in just the first That's weekend. Crazy. Wow, incredible. And the plot, one of the best kept secrets in Hollywood. But we've got a first look at a He's brand new so clip. Good. People will be pouring over it all morning, searching for clues. You have to wait for that. We're going to begin with that major news out of the White House shakeup. President Trump has forced out his Secretary of Homeland Security, Kirsten Nielsen, after a rocky 16 months targeted by critics for separating families at the border by the president for not being tough enough. Our senior national correspondent Terry Moran starts us off from the White House. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, George. When the end came for Kirsten Nielsen, it was sudden but not a surprise. For months, President Trump has been openly berating Secretary Nielsen at cabinet meetings, pushing her to take more and more drastic measures to stop the flow of migrants at the southern border. She became the face of the toughest immigration policies in this country, including that family separation policy in years. But all for naught, the migrants kept coming, and President Trump's patience ran out. Overnight, Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen forced out of the administration. Tensions between Nielsen and President Trump have been simmering for months, but reached a boiling point after the president's furious response to the recent surge in migrant crossings at the southern border. Just hours after a face-to-face -face meeting with the president on Sunday, Nielsen submitted her resignation, writing, Despite our progress in reforming Homeland Security for a new age, I have determined that it is the right time for me to step aside. A source close to Nielsen said the two had a series of intense clashes and angry phone calls in recent weeks. According to the New York Times, the president called Ms. Nielsen at home early in the mornings to demand that she take action to stop migrants from entering the country, including doing things that were clearly illegal, such as blocking all migrants from seeking asylum. He also held her personally responsible for the spike in migrant crossings. Border officials estimate the number of migrants attempting to cross into the U.S. could reach as high as one million this year. The president's frustration with the border has been on full display. The system is full. Can't take you anymore. Whether it's asylum, whether it's uh, anything you want, it's illegal immigration. Can't take you anymore. We can't take you. Our country is full. Nielsen will likely best be remembered for enforcing the president's zero-tolerance policy, which resulted in the separation of thousands of migrant children from their families at the border, some of whom are still trying to reunite. There's no love lost for her from Democrats. I'm talking about people who have died in your custody. You don't have the number? Follow Would you that like one. me to answer the question yes, or you I want like to just yell at me? Because it's up I to ask. you. But while some are saying good riddance, others are now voicing concern over who will lead the agency next. And so her legacy will be that many courts did find several of the major policies that Kirsten Nielsen put in place to be unlawful. That certainly will be part of her legacy. George? And Terry, the second major move by the president in the last three days, on late Friday, he withdrew the nomination of his immigration uh, director, Ron Vitiello, for that to head ICE. And he's saying he wanted to go in a tougher direction. And so it's clear the president wants harsher action. But what more can he do within the law? 
Well, he's looking, and he is doing some things to stem legal migration. He's closing offices around the world uh, that help people get to the United States, including family reunification. So he's trying to shut down that. Uh, but this number of migrants keeps increasing. He's looking for a magic bullet, close the border, tariffs, something that will stop the flow. But it is a complex problem. As Kirsten Nielsen found out. Yeah, and another friend is also raising the limits on, on immigration as well. I want to bring in our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, for more on this as well. And, and Pierre, it is clear that there has been a surge of migrants at the border since January. That's the right, George. We could have as, twice as many undocumented immigrants apprehended at the southern border this year compared to last if a recent surge continues. The monthly number of migrants caught arriving at the border has doubled, jumping from 40,000 a month in the early days of the Trump administration to roughly 75,000 to 100,000 a month recently. And, George, the demographics have changed over time. Homeland Security officials say there's been a surge in families, including those with young children, George. And, and, and Kirsten Nielsen has been focused on the border, but the Homeland Security Department has much broader responsibilities than that. That's right, George. It's one of the biggest departments and most critical departments with a multi-billion dollar budget and 22 agencies housed within it. Originally formed to fight against and prepare for terrorist attacks after 9-11, its mission also includes so much more, playing a critical role in cybersecurity, protecting the nation's infrastructure, responding to disasters. That's right. FEMA is under its authority, as is the Secret Service, which is responsible for protecting the president. And they oversee security at the airports with the TSA and, of course, securing those two southern borders, those two borders, George. Huge, huge job. Pierre Thomas, thanks very much. Amy? George, now to that American tourist and her guide finally freed after being kidnapped and held for ransom in Uganda for nearly a week. Kimberly Sue Endicott is on her way home to the U.S. this morning. In fact, that's her helicopter leaving just moments ago. But her kidnappers are still on the loose. Our senior foreign correspondent, Ian Panel, is in Uganda with all the latest. Good morning, Ian. Yeah, good morning, Amy. This is the spot where Kimberly Sue was taken, and it's also where she was released almost five days to the hour after she was snatched. Details now emerging about how she was brought out and America's role in the rescue. This morning, American tourist Kimberly Sue Endicott is free. Seen taking off on a helicopter just moments ago. Rescued after being held hostage in the Congo and Uganda for five days. This image capturing Endicott's moments after she was brought back to the Wild Frontiers Lodge in Uganda. Seen here greeting the resort's director. As far as you know, they're safe, well. Everything is excellent now. Everything's excellent. Yes. Last Tuesday, Endicott was on safari in Queen Elizabeth National Park when four kidnappers ambushed the car she was in with safari guide Jean-Paul Merengue Remezo. On Sunday, the Uganda police force issuing a statement saying the two were recovered unharmed, in good health and in the safe hands of the joint security team. A U.S. defense official telling ABC News American military providing intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance and liaison officers to the rescue mission. The United States government doesn't pay for hostages because it puts everybody else that's in that country at danger of being kidnapped and also ransomed. Ugandan authorities also refused to pay for the hostages release, but while Frontiers telling ABC News that a ransom was paid as part of a negotiated handover. The amount isn't known, but it was reportedly much less than the original demand of half a million dollars. Hundreds of thousands of tourists visit 10 national parks across Uganda every year. And this is the first hostage-taking incident in more than 30 years. But with the kidnappers still at large and a hunt operation ongoing, this is still not over. So who paid the ransom and why? The US Secretary of State saying just last week that America doesn't pay kidnappers. Now Kimberly Sue is on her way home, but we're not allowed into the park, and that's because of this ongoing operation to try and find the kidnappers who are still at large. Amy? We certainly hope they find them soon, Ian. Thanks so much. Janae? And out of that severe weather on the move with 26 million Americans in its path, the storms are bringing heavy rain and damaging winds with gusts topping 70 miles an hour. Ginger is tracking it all for us. Ginger, good morning. And those storms are also bringing giant hail. Yes, bigger than golf ball size hail. So start out with these videos out of Pasadena, Texas. So just southeast of Houston. Tough to see there. The collapsed buildings, the roofs peeled off. This was just one of 175 severe storm reports this weekend. Wind gusts strong enough to send cranes swinging in downtown Houston. Gusts for some parts of Texas reaching up to 74 miles per hour. Look at that hail. Hail bigger than golf balls pounding backyards in Alto. The roof of that barn was swirling 
over the top of here. In Pasadena, Texas Sunday, an EF1 tornado peeling off roofs and destroying buildings. We had a tornado come through here. I went to the window and we seen uh, trampolines, barns flying around and stuff, so it was kind of crazy. In San Gabriel, severe storms destroying this nearly 100-year-old church. The ceiling's gone. We could have been having services when this happened. You know, uh, it's a tremendous blessing. And near Eugene, Oregon, mandatory evacuations for flash flooding after nearly seven inches of rain inundated the area. And in Lebanon, Oregon, fire crews rescuing two people and one dog who were stranded in the rising river water. We do have broken, broken poles, broken uh, uh, power lines down. Uh, we do have a building that's, that's partial collapse. With the severe storms, there will be flash flooding. Already have seen it six to eight inches of flash flooding in southern Arkansas. But let me show you where it all goes next. See along that cold front, you've got the severe storms forecast in place for a large area in the southeast, much of North Carolina and South Carolina. Atlanta is included today, Knoxville, Tennessee, and back there in that little circle just west of Birmingham, including Tupelo. George. Okay, Ginger, thanks. We're going to get the latest now on a series of fires at three historically black churches in Louisiana over the last over less than two weeks. ABC Steve Post and Sami joins us more on the investigation. Good morning, Steve. Good morning to you, George. The state fire marshal says that while he can't say definitively that these fires are related, it's hard to believe that all of this is a coincidence. A series of suspicious fires have hit these black churches in the south. Three houses of worship, 200 miles apart, have been destroyed in St. Landry Parish in Louisiana starting in late March. The first fire tore through St. Mary's Baptist Church. The next, the Greater Union Baptist Church, and the most recent, Mount Pleasant Baptist, just four days ago. At this point, we believe there is some relation, you know, whether it's a single person, a single technique, a single method, we're not ready to speak to that yet. Local police, the FBI, and the ATF are investigating these fires as possible arson. On Sunday, 80 churchgoers whose church was destroyed held services at another church in town. Something's not right. And we're just going to keep on, keep on, keep it on. Their pastor told them that they lost their church, but not their hope. It steals something from you. It robs you. But then right now is a time for me to find something to pick them up. It caused us to pray harder and pray more frequently. This is the time for us to pull together. Very gracious, of course, for that church to volunteer their church for the folks who lost theirs, as they say, God has many homes and many houses. George. And see, they now think a fourth fire may be connected to this? They are. They're saying that there was a fourth fire, but they, they believe that one, though, 200 miles away. They're not sure if it is absolutely connected, but there is a fourth incident that they're looking into this morning. George. Steve Osin Sami, thanks. Janae? All right, also this morning, there are new developments in the college admissions scandal. A student has now been expelled from Stanford University in connection with the case. ABC's Lindsay Davis is here. And Lindsay, this is one of the first students to actually be expelled in this case. That's exactly right. Good morning to you, Janae. This is one of the first confirmed expulsions of a student in that Varsity Blue scandal who was actually enrolled and attending classes. Stanford says that it has rescinded the admission of a female student who, according to the Stanford Daily, fabricated sailing credentials in her application. The unnamed student is reportedly no longer on campus, and Stanford says that they have vacated her credits. Now, according to the school newspaper, after she was admitted, a half a million dollar contribution was paid to the school's sailing program through the school's former sailing coach. That coach was then fired last month after pleading guilty to accepting donations in connection with the scandal. And so, Lindsay, last week we saw about a dozen parents in court in connection with this case. This week, the man who's accused of taking tests for some students, he's doing court on Friday? That's right. Mark Riddell, who's the former Florida uh, school administrator, prep school administrator, he's expected to plead guilty to conspiracy to commit mail fraud and money laundering on Friday. All right, Lindsay, thank you so much, Amy. All right, thanks, Janae. Now to a thrilling finish at the Women's National Championship game, going right down to the wire, Baylor taking the title, holding off defending champs Notre Dame, battling back after losing a star player and a 17-point lead rallying to win. Thanks to this layup, woo, with four seconds left. It's Baylor's third national championship and their first since beating the Irish in the 2012 final. And 
Of course, there's more basketball tonight, sadly, without my Michigan State Spartans. <laughs> I knew that was going to be hard for you. Baylor, now in good company. They're joining UConn and Tennessee as the only D1 uh, d uh, teams that have three titles or more. But you're Michigan State. You yeah, have so many different weekend. teams. No, I have two. <laughs> University of Georgia and Michigan State. Two teams. And they both disappointed me this year. Uh, tough break for Amy. But tonight, the men will battle it out for their championship. An unexpected matchup between Virginia and Texas Tech. Virginia making it to the finals after pulling off a miracle comeback against Auburn. Texas Tech stunning Amy's Michigan State. <laughs> ABC's TJ Holmes is in Minneapolis for the big game. TJ, good morning. Break it all down. Good morning to you all, and look at these smiling faces. I mean, why shouldn't they be smiling? I had to calm down the spirit squads this morning from Texas Tech and Virginia. You know, I had to say, hey, act like you've been here before. But the truth is, they haven't. This is the first championship game for Virginia and for Texas Tech. And at least in the case of Virginia, they are here because of a controversial call over the weekend. It seemed not the players, but maybe a referee made their play of the day. After a month of madness, it all comes down to this. A showdown between number one seed Virginia and three seed Texas Tech. They barely got into tonight's title matchup after a thrilling but controversial ending to their semifinal win against Auburn. With five seconds remaining and down by two, Virginia's Ty Jerome lost control of the ball for a moment but picked it up with both hands and kept dribbling. That was a clear violation, a double dribble, but the officials missed it. Then seconds later... It's gone. The officials called a foul on Auburn. You have a right to come down. Virginia's Kyle Guy hit all three free throws. He got all three. Sealing the win. Virginia has been on a season-long redemption tour. Just a year ago, the Cavaliers were on the wrong side of tournament history, becoming the first one seed ever knocked out in the first round. We know what we're in for. We know how good Texas Tech is. Um, so we know it's going to be a dogfight. Their unlikely opponent tonight, Texas Tech, is in the final for the first time. They're celebrating in the streets in Lubbock. Back in Lubbock, Texas, some celebrations got out of hand with some fans setting fires and flipping cars. Riot police were called in. At least 20 people were arrested. All right, a big thanks, of course, to Spirit Squads from both schools. And get this, guys, both schools, these are two of the top three defenses in all of college basketball. So might be a low-scoring affair, but it should be thrilling as well. At least for the folks at Texas Tech, get this, guys. Kids are out of school tomorrow. Win or lose, <laughs> classes are canceled. I should have gone to Tech. <laughs> and TJ, Virginia looking for redemption. Texas Tech also has something to prove. But this game could be all about defense for these two teams. Oh, absolutely. That's the case. Two of the top three defenses of all time. And look, hey, it, 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 it's on another network, so maybe it'll be a snooze fest. <laughs> <laughs> so have to promote it since this game's not on our network. Nicely done, TJ. <laughs> TJ. Nicely done. We have an interview coming up with the mother of that fifth grader who died after a fight at school last week. A substitute teacher was in the room, and now the mother is demanding, demanding answers. That exclusive is next. And then get ready. We're just moments away from your first look at that brand new Avengers yes, Endgame sir. scene. But first, let's go back to Ginger. Oh, Amy, Highway 58 in Oak Ridge, Oregon, shut down because of a landslide, and they've got more where that came from and another big storm that I'll tell you about later. Your local weather in 30 seconds. First, though, the Select Cities, sponsored by Walmart. <gasps> Warm out the door this morning and even warmer today than yesterday by 5 degrees. Could be our first 80 degree day of the year. We'll have some filtered sunshine. Later today after about 5, 6, 7 o'clock, we'll have some isolated showers and storms around the area so not everyone gets the wet weather. Tomorrow, expect another warm day. Maybe a shower early or a thunder shower. Midweek, cooler, mid to upper 60s. Wednesday, Thursday, we'll have the return of some wet weather on Friday, but a nice Saturday coming your way. Full Monday ahead. We'll be right back.
Carla is living with metastatic breast cancer.